begin right now. Okay. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Carla Sanabria and I'm an officer of the Student National Education Association here at UCF and I will be facilitating today's session. Just before we get started, I'm going to go over some rules. Please make sure that you keep your microphones muted unless instructed otherwise. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to write those down into our chat box and we will address them with proper time. But that being said, the School of Teacher Education and SMEA presents Read for the Record by Dr. Spalding and Dr. K. Take it away. Thank you, Carla. So uh, welcome everyone. As Carla was speaking, I was admitting uh, friends into our session today. Uh, Ms. Kay and I are so excited about this particular passion project. Last year when we were face to face, uh, she was my right hand in all things read for the record. And we've continued that this year in light of the pandemic and tried to put together a presentation for you all that will be helpful uh, when you try, hopefully, to deliver Read for the Record virtually. So I noticed that a good number of you have already started to connect to our presentation. So I'm actually going to uh, copy and paste in the Pear Deck link once again. Uh, you should also be able to see my screen and there are multiple ways to uh, add yourself to a Pear Deck. Uh, which is such a great tool. You can go to joinpd.com and simply enter the join code, which is EWDSKZ, or you can simply click on the link that I delivered in the chat. So we'll give you just a minute to do that. You see Mindy, Mindy keeps trying to get in. I keep allowing her in. So while we're waiting for uh, folks to join uh, we've got 19. Excellent. Now we have 20. Uh, I just want to highlight my Zoom screen here. Uh, we want to honor the fact that we are uh, celebrating homecoming at UCF and uh, our alumni center, for those of us that have been educated and also are employed by the University of Central Florida, they sent us some really cool backgrounds. So I'm a triple knight. Uh, I've been educated here at UCF with all of my degrees and am obviously currently employed here, as many of you are my students or my former students. So we're so excited to have you here. And I'm Miss Kay, and I uh, know a lot of you. I've been looking, we have almost uh, 41 people on the call today. So we're so excited. I teach all the reading and writing education courses in South Lake and on main campus. So I'm so excited to be here and be a part. Dr. Spalding introduced me to Read for the Record uh, two years ago, and I was so excited to help her plan. And anytime you can bring literacy and the community together to benefit kids, I am in. And so this is one of my absolute favorite activities um, to do. And it, it, it makes reading bigger than just you, right? reading bigger than just your classroom. And so anytime you can introduce something exciting, um, I just think it's really helpful. So I'm very excited to see a lot of same students and uh, we have some graduates on the call today too. Um, and so we're just so excited about this. And Dr. Uh, Wenzel and I are running a Reading Buddies book club for kids in the community. And this is our, we're gonna actually do these activities with K-5 students in just next week. So we're really excited to put this into practice. It's not just something we're talking about, something we're doing. Absolutely. So it looks like we've got 30 students in. Carla, how many? I can't see how many are actually with us. There's 41. I think we should go ahead and begin. However, uh, Carla, if you can take that link and continuously put it in the chat box, those students that are not yet in will be able to join us, if that's okay. Of course. All right, so those of you that know Miss Kay and myself, you know that we are fans of Bitmojis. And if you can even see my screen, my cursor is a Bitmoji as well. So we've already introduced ourselves and today's Night Ed Talks is all about read for the record. And notice that on this book here, I highlighted the book that uh, Jumpstart selected 
which is, and this is always challenging when you have a Zoom background, but it's Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. And you'll see a picture of it here shortly. So before we specifically get into this topic, we actually want you all to tell us something nice that you did uh, this week uh, or something nice that you did for someone else, something for yourself or for someone else. Dr. Spalding, we can't see that. Oh, interesting. Hold it. You see it now? Hmm. Nope. Interesting. Okay, hold on. How about now? Yes, there you go. Okay. All right. So let me back up one. There we are. We love Bitmojis. Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. And now using Pear Deck, I can already see that some of you have added responses. So tell us something nice that you did for you this week or something nice that you did for someone else. And one of the beautiful things about Pear Deck is that uh, the teacher can see responses, but we can also share responses like this. So it kind of comes up, you know what it reminds me of now that I think about it? It reminds me of poll everywhere uh, when you use that in classes. So this here, you made desserts for the classroom reading party. I love it. It was your mom's birthday. So you all went out for a family meal. You took a shift for someone else at work. That's amazing and so kind. Treated your mom to a girl's day lunch. Ooh, Manny's and Petty's. I love it. And look how it's live. So I'm reading now I took on extra responsibilities. So I don't know. That probably wasn't being kind to you, but you were being kind to someone else for sure. I totally missed out on Prime Day, so I'm jealous to those of you that got some good deals on teacher supplies. I love it. You ordered the book virtually so that you can do it in your mom's class. That's fantastic. Made your boyfriend breakfast. I'm sure he was thrilled. Took a personal day. You found a wallet and returned it. That is fantastic. That is being a good citizen. You adopted a pet dwarf hamster. <laughs> I want to um, see that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'd like cute. to see that too. And I'm wondering if it's running on the wheel all night and you're happy with that adoption. Uh, <laughs> you made a goodie bas basket for some stressing after stressing with midterms. Love it. Sunshine cart. Roommates out to eat. Walked your dog. We've been doing extra dog walks with our dog too. Good for you for taking a mental health day. So important. Yes. Dad's birthday. I love it. Laundry. That was certainly not being kind to you, but that was very kind to others. Organizing and cleaning. And the list goes on. Look at all. Oh, I love this. You switch shifts, shifts so that you could come to this meeting. Look at how a lot of our things are related to food and books. Those are two of my favorite things also. Oh, that's really nice to your husband, cleaning out the closet. So that's fantastic. Um, be kind to yourself during these times and be kind to others. And I think Read for the Record just is surrounded in kindness and usually has a theme of kindness that you're going to see as we present some of the activities coming up shortly. So... What is, can you see it, Miss Kay? We can. Okay, good. What is read for the record? So I was actually reflecting on this. The first time I did a read for the record event was in 2008. So I've actually been involved with this program uh, for the last 12 years. And here's what really grabbed my attention because there are a lot of programs out there that you can subscribe to. Um, but this one really at its core, as you can see, was all about sharing high quality picture books with young children and really to lay the foundation for early literacy skills. And research shows that we need to lay those foundations um, at a very young age with children in order to uh, enhance their success 
specifically in the area of literacy. But even beyond literacy, there's more of a global um, feel to read for the record because they really do, as you can see on this slide, they wanna foster language and social emotional development. So we tried to uh, incorporate some activities that definitely had that SEL feel to them. It honors the diversity in our world. So they are very selective about the books that they choose for this particular event. And they want the books to truly um, represent society and different members of society and different things that members of our society go through that children can connect to. Uh, they choose books that have a very strong narrative, which is excellent for teachers. You can certainly teach narrative elements of stories at least, at its least, with Read for the Record books. And the books certainly appeal to young children. And the majority of us here on this call have dedicated ourselves to early childhood or elementary education. And so this year's book is um, called Evelyn Del Rey is Moving Away. Um, and next week, October 29th, is the actual read for the record day. And so while you can celebrate any day, um, we encourage everyone to read this book with students on October 29th. I know many of you are in internship right now. So if you had to celebrate that Monday or Tuesday, totally okay. Um, but just know that all around the country, um, children are going to listen to this book in classrooms um, on October 29th. And you can register um, to read, oh, here it is, um, um, on an upcoming screen. If you go back to the so the big day is October 29th, but the reason we put this slide in is because I know, for example, my Peds Academy interns, they're going to be utilizing this book all week. Uh, along with activities related to putting the boo in books because it's also Halloween week. So lots of literacy related activities. It does not necessarily have to happen on the day, but realize that when we get to the spot where we talk about pledging, that you would wanna make sure that you reflect the numbers of students that you impact because the whole idea of reading for the record is that they're going to amass the number of students that were exposed to Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. This is really exciting. So just what Dr. Spalding was said, you can pledge to read at readfortherecord.org. So we would love for you to do that at the end of the call today, um, at the end of this. And so that way you will be counted um, and your students will be counted as well. 22 million readers and counting. Remember when I said when literacy and the community come together to support kids, 22 million people, that is amazing. Uh, you can also, Dr. Spalding and I are really big on social media. Uh, so is the school of teacher education and the college. And so at the end, we're going to give you our Twitter handles. Um, and so when you do read for the record, make sure you hashtag read for the record on social media um, and take pictures. Obviously, if you're taking pictures of kids, make sure they have um, permission to do that. Um, but you can take pictures of what they're doing. We have ordered um, some special copies of the book. Um, Dr. Spalding has some, I have a few. Um, so we'll make sure that if you're interested, we'll be able to get those to you or at least give you the link to, um, so you can get your own. Um, and you, we're basically partnering with Jumpstart to host an in-person or virtual event. So all the activities that we're gonna show today, you can do either way. So you can do them with students in a face-to-face -face classroom or you could do them in a remote setting. One of the things I love the best is I've done, I did this last year um, with my LAE 4314 class and we partnered um, with Dr. Spaulding. And then this year, um, several of my students are now graduated and in schools and they've sent me pictures and said, I'm doing this with my students this year. And so it's not something because next year they'll just pick a different book. And so every year the book changes. And so you get to be creative and, and come up with activities that, that correlate. So, and I know that some of you on this call, as I was looking at the names, uh, you were face-to-face -face helping Ms. Kay and I last year uh, it, at UCF, serving uh, what approximately 150 pre-K and kindergarten children from the Creative School and the Academic Center for Excellence. So we certainly uh, appreciate you all joining us back again today and thinking about how you can use these books in your internships and or classrooms that you have connections to 
and then exposing your supervising teachers and teacher friends about this particular program, I will say oftentimes as the date nears, they will provide a digital text. And I would imagine that when we start checking the Read for the Record site next week, that they will uh, probably have some virtual text that you would be able to use uh, because they really want students to be exposed to these books and for teachers to be able to perform these types of activities. Here's a little bit of our fun um, for how we are reading for the record. So as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Wenzel and I are hosting a Reading Buddies virtual book club. We did International Dot Day with our students um, two weeks ago. Um, and so you see all the little kids with their books. Um, so my 4942 class, and I see some of my students on today actually participate with uh, 13 K-5 kids in the community. And so we're gonna do the same thing um, next week with Read for the Record book. And also our friends at Tiberius High School, we partner with a lot of teaching academies, high school teaching academies. Um, and two years ago, they started with maybe something beautiful. And then last year they did Thank You Amu. And so this year they're very excited to bring the third year of Read for the Record into their program with their little buddies at Tiberius Elementary School. Um, Dr. Wenzel also has um, partnerships and you can see the different schools in uh, part of the TQP program, they are going to celebrate as well as the Orlando Day Nursery. If you're interested in volunteering at the Orlando Day Nursery, there'll be a link at the end for you to sign up and participate as well. Excellent. All right, so just so you know, uh, Miss Kay and I got together and we started brainstorming, brainstorming fun activities that we could do. But obviously at readfortherecord.org, there are official uh, resources and a toolkit that you can utilize. And specifically when we click here and tell me if I need to do a new share, I think I do. When you click here, it takes you to a PDF of all sorts of activities. And all of this should look very familiar to what you're learning in your RED and LAE classes in regards to best practice early literacy strategies. So of course, pre-teaching vocabulary and then truly having students interact with content. So they put together a nice little resource for all of you. And again, that can just be found at readfortherecord.org. All right. One of the great things, Dr. Spalding, about how we created this menu for you of resources, if you want to go back one more slide, uh -huh. um, anytime you see underlined words, you just click on it and we actually linked it for you. So you don't have to go searching. Um, you can just click on the underlined um, words and it will take you right to the resource. Absolutely. And we will deliver this to you in the chat uh, at the end of the presentation because we didn't do that yet. All right. So you heard Ms. K talk a little bit about the menu. So basically what we realized is that you all are in different classrooms in different locations in different grade levels. And some of what we're going to share is going to be more applicable to your situation and the students that you might be working with and wanting to incorporate Read for the Record with than some of the others. But I'll tell you that most of the activities, they are activities that can certainly be modified to um, meet any of the needs of elementary age students. I should say that Read for the Record usually targets children around the ages of four and five. So the books do tend to be more appropriate for younger students. However, I think specifically with Evelyn Del Rey is moving away, uh, it really does uh, broach a subject of a friend moving away and leaving and that mobility and some of the social emotional uh, you know, feelings that you might have that go along with that. And that's certainly something that our intermediate students deal with uh, on a regular basis. So we certainly think that these interdisciplinary activities will be ones that you'll be able to modify and use. Absolutely. And we um, missed somehow the video to kind of the trailer for the book, um, but we can talk about it just a little bit before we start to talk about um, the activities that link to the book. So I'm going to not have a virtual background because it is really hard to see a book with the virtual background. But this story um, takes place, it, it, I agree, it does have a lot of um, background that is very appropriate for intermediate students 
um, as well as it can be easily adapted. So in these special paperback uh, jumpstart editions, they do have all of the vocabulary terms um, that you are able to see um, and use. I appreciate that. So it talks about bringing the story to life, which is really what we're talking about today is how do you go beyond the book um, to support literacy. So just real quick, I just wanted to show you, and it also has Spanish words uh, infused in the story. So just the first page says, Evan, Evelyn Del Rey is my mejor amiga, my numero uno best friend. Come on, come play, Daniela, she says, just like she always does, just like today is any other day. And so it sets it up where the two friends live across the street in buildings, and I'm not going to read you the whole story, um, but just so you know, the whole entire story talks about this move and what the friends do to prepare for this move emotionally. Um, they are not exactly excited about it, um, as you can tell, but they do spend the day um, playing together and saying goodbye to their neighbors and, how, and figuring out how this might impact them. So they play hide and seek within their favorite spots. Um, and at the very end of the book, really the whole entire story is about her moving away. And so um, it, I have to admit that the first time I read it, I thought it was a story. And so Thank it's you. not one, yeah, you're like happy feel good books. This is not it. But there is a really sweet message at the end. Um, and it just shows um, the friends all grown up and how they become actual pen pals with each other. And so it's a really sweet story of friendship. It took, it took us a minute to think about it, how we were gonna use this, why they might have chosen this specific book. And when I think of um, everything happening right now, quarantine and being separated from our friends and our family members, and how might we still interact, um, this book is really relevant. So. Um, I just wanted to share just a little bit of it before we jumped into it. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Kay. So, so one of the first activities on our menu uh, is a simple game because Evelyn and Daniela, those are our two main characters in the story, they play games as good friends do. And uh, one of our ideas is to play Simon Says. So I did embed a video of a Simon Says song and video that you could use. But of course, this is a classic game. This is an easy game that you could um, either do remotely if you're teaching remotely or face-to-face. -face. And the setup here is that Evelyn and Daniela play games together as good friends do. So when you're thinking about this specifically with Simon Says, notice that in the heart on the left-hand side, I said math and movement. So one of my ideas specifically for uh, pre-K or kindergarten or first grade to involve number sense is to actually call out, Simon says, tap your nose three times. One, two, three. Or Simon says, do five jumping jacks and make sure that they are actually counting along with you uh, to incorporate a little bit of math and number sense with that particular movement. Uh, you can play the traditional Simon Says and it just to be a movement activity, which obviously would be a great uh, transition activity as well to get kids up and moving. And those of you that are in your placements, you know that you need those brain breaks and we need to get kids moving in our classrooms. Anything to add to that, Ms. Kay? No, I just think that it's so important. Brain breaks are important in, in college classes as well when yes. we're teaching remotely. Um, and so this is really helpful. And I do appreciate how we've tried in every slide to link a content standard to um, this activity. So we know that that's super important. Absolutely. All right, so we're real excited about this one. The next one is like I showed you at the very end of the story, we see Evelyn and Daniela writing letters from one of the friends receiving the letters. And so Daniela wrote letters to Evelyn to let her know how much she values their friendship. Who would you write a letter to to show you care? So thinking about that, um, it could be, if you're doing this with friends in the classroom, um, they could write letters to friends in the classroom. They could write letters to um, someone at school who is helpful, like somebody who works in the cafeteria or maybe the bus driver or the principal, or it can be a family member. We also talked about um, linking this book to another book um, called Flat Stanley um, that talks about letter writing and geography. And we found this amazing <laughs> Read on readwritethink.org, which is a 
great resource. It is a letter generator where you can write your own friendly letter on the computer. The kids can write it and then actually send it. So as um, teachers in writing, we need to model what that looks like for kids. So as a class, you can write your own letter um, to someone. One of uh, my favorite things to do is write letters to the author. Um, and tell the author how much we love their books. So this could be something that you would model with your class. Um, I think Dr. Spelling is trying to pull that up right now. Um, so you can see what it looks like. You do need Flash Player for this um, on your computer, um, but it is a really great way to um, just create that model for students in the virtual space. In a classroom, Heart paper and smelly markers never does you wrong, but in a remote setting, this letter generator could be very helpful. Well, and I also think, Miss Kay, that the chart paper and the smelly markers starts out with direct instruction, our nice little modeled writing lesson, and then we actually can send the students, especially those of you that are one-to-one -one with devices, which I know we have uh, quite a good number of our interns that are currently one-to-one -one with devices. And if they weren't as of last March, they are now as of October in 2020 because it was a necessity. So uh, you can see the letter generator. And I will say that Read, Write, Think, I know I expose my LAE students to this uh, particular website each semester, but they have an entire section of interactives. In fact, over 50 different interactives. So for example, there's a timeline interactive, uh, there's just so many different tools uh, that are available. And the one that worked really well for us, obviously, was the letter generator because Evelyn and uh, Daniela write letters to each other to keep in touch. And while we are in a very text message, email driven society right now, I love getting real mail. And I still send real cards to friends. And I think that that's really important. So as you look here uh, on the letter generator, it can either be a friendly letter or a business letter. So realize that you are actually going to be teaching your students what's appropriate in different forms of writing. So of course, this is a friendly letter. So we would add our address. I just wanna go through uh, a little bit of what this looks like with you all. I don't, have you, did you click the get started yet? We can't see that. Oh, hold on. One of the other things I wanted to mention while Dr. Spalding gets that up is, there you go, we can see it. it. Um, the letter writing is actually a floor, language arts Florida standard starting in second grade. So writing a friendly letter is actually a, um, a standard that teachers are using. Absolutely. And then I'm going to put 1029 of 20, um, which is our read for the record date. And then it leads them right into it. So take a look at the left-hand side. This is the structure and they're highlighting for you. This would be the salutation, of course, step two, and they're highlighting in red each part. So you would simp simply say, you know, if you want to, if we're writing to Daniela, then next, and then you start to generate the content. So we would suggest to you all that you have your students identify some things that they would wanna share. And I think when we're talking about early writers, we want them to write about things that they know about. So tell their friend about their pet, tell their friend about what they did over the weekend, tell their friend about a great book that they're reading. And you can give that kind of feedback to them so that they can then add this information to their letter and notice it's going to allow them some different options for closing. So it says the closing can change depending on whom, to whom you are writing. Here's some examples. Uh, so what do we want to use? Well, of course, she's our friend. So we're going to say your friend and it's already says a comma is included. And I'm going to say Dr. Spaulding and Go nights, read for the record. And then look, so you get to this uh, final product, which can be printed, which can be saved and sent to a student, or that can even be shared through email. So it ends up as a PDF. 
So I kind of like this because then they could actually, young children could illustrate what it is that they spoke about in their friendly letter to uh, their friend. Pretty cool. And look, you can even do the envelope instructions too, if that's part of what you are seeking to do with your students. So fantastic. All right. Gotcha. I just, it's such yeah. a fun way to connect. And I love to, if there were any typos, it gives you the preview. And so you can go back uh, and change it. And so I love that thinking about conferring with students, giving them the opportunity to share it with you, talk about it, and then you can always go back. Um, they can go back and edit if they needed to. So again, that's read, write, think, and all of you should have that bookmarked because honestly, it's such a great resource in uh, all content areas. This one specifically, of course, ELA and writing. Yeah, and if you forget where it is, you click on the underlined word, which is letter. And so that will go. The next one, activity three, um, Evelyn and Daniela are kind to each other because kindness rocks. Creating a rock treasure that can spread kindness to all that see the rock garden. And so this is arts integration and SEL. Um, we do have our very own rock garden at UCF. Dr. Blanche and Dr. Trenta started a kindness rocks um, garden. Um, outside the living learning community. So when we get to go back to campus, um, you, please make sure to go check that out. And so rock painting um, is just a fun way to leave treasures for friends and find them. I know some towns have little rocks hidden places and you can go find them. It just brightens, brightens everyone's day. A lot of schools have also started implementing these um, around their campus. So this, uh, we found a blog. Um, Mod, mod hodge rocks blog.com uh and it just has lots of different rock painting ideas um and that I, I always like that there is also a video on my top rock painting tips um because if you have not painted rocks before there is a little trick to it you have to wash the rocks before you start i did not know that before so fun fact so as uh miss k mentioned of course our focus here arts integration and i really want to emphasize that uh, we have students in our classrooms that truly need that creative outlet and they need their teachers to incorporate the arts into uh, lessons in the classroom. And of course, this one as well, as we started off the presentation with asking what you've done kind for you or what you've done kindly for someone else this week, we really want to promote kindness. And I think we'd all agree uh, in our current climate in our world that we need to spread kindness like glitter. All right, so this is another really fun activity and I have actually done this. Uh, I spent the bulk of my time teaching first and second grade and I don't know if you can see it, but Dr. Kelly is uh, also on the call and Dr. Kelly and I used to teach together at the elementary level and I was a first grade teacher and she was the fifth grade teacher and our classes were buddies. So we have actually taught together now for, I don't know, I think we figured out um, the longest amount of time collectively between public education and the University of Central Florida. So here, notice that um, we're saying that you could actually have the students, again, you love to paint with your friends. This is an activity you could do, a fun activity you do with your friend, mimicking what uh, Evelyn and Daniela do in the story but to have an activity where they can write secret messages. Now, Ms. K, this is something that you are actually planning on doing, correct? We Next are. week with students. So I'm gonna let you take it from here. Yes, and so um, it, it's so fun and Dr. Wenzel actually came up with it. So you get just watercolor paper um, and give students a white crayon. And so they write, um, letters or words or anything on this with white crayon. Then you take watercolor and you brush over it. So it looks just like a white piece of paper. When they get it, they can share it with a friend. And then the friend uses watercolor paints and the message comes to life. And so it is so fun. Two weeks ago, um, the buddies in the Wednesday clinic, in the Wednesday book club, actually did this in a word sort where they were building CVC words. And so the students wrote cat and dog and whatever, and then in white crayon, and then they took their paintbrushes and they painted over it and the kids' eyes were like, <gasps> like, it's just so fun because it comes to life and it doesn't really cost much money. It's like little watercolors that are like 99 cents. And so it's just a really 
fun way. Can you imagine getting a letter in the mail, a white piece of paper with a watercolor set? It's just a great way to engage, um, again, in using the arts um, into writing. And I would also add a little bit of science because there's some science that goes along with that and how the crayon resists the paint. That's how the message comes about. So a little bit more of English language arts with writing included here. All right, the next one on the menu, activity five. Uh, several of you on the call are in my social studies class. So you know that there's no way I'm going to do an event and not incorporate social studies. So specifically here, Evelyn Del Rey is moving away. So we have to acknowledge that. That's the title of the book. She's making a move. So my idea was, where would you want her to go so that you could visit her? So friends visit each other. So if I have a friend that moves to New York City, yay, because I wanna go to New York City, right? Um, if I have a friend that moved to Hawaii, wonderful, because I'd love to visit Hawaii and to stay in touch. So these activities are specifically related to social studies and geography, acknowledging the fact that Evelyn Del Rey is moving. So the next slide, notice it says Pear Deck and Google Earth. So when you get this, that's going to just give you information about Pear Deck and then also about utilizing Google Earth in your classroom, which I strongly recommend. Uh, it's just amazing the technology that we have these days to truly have students interact, which is what you are about to do. So you'll notice here at uh, on this particular slide, I say, we don't know where Evelyn is moving to. Where would you want her to go? So notice at the bottom, as a student, you can drag any of the icons to anywhere around the world that you would want Evelyn to move to. So go ahead and do that. So we've got students dragging their icons all over. We can't see it, Dr. Spalding. Can you? All right, hold on. It was very interesting. And the, the reading strategy, I think, is in inferring. inferring. You need to infer where she's going. She does have a moving van. Uh, so I assume it is not across continents, but you never know. And so we're kind of thinking about where she was and where she's going. Um, and, and I don't know that if she was going super close, um, they would have such worry to, their, to them and they wouldn't maybe be so sad if it was maybe 30 minutes or they were going to get to go to the same school. So there's lots of inference you can do within the book. Oh, there you go. Perfect. You can see it. So look at what you all are doing from the teacher side. So I love it. We've got um, some of you started to use some of your tools to check it out. I think that's fantastic. And look how simple it is to move. And then as a teacher talking about the various continents and wow, you'd want her to go overseas and what does that mean? There's so many great geographical terms that you could include. Look how much fun you all are having with this. Imagine what the students would experience. I absolutely love it. Nice job. And notice how simple it is. And I'll be really honest, Pear Deck does a beautiful job with templates. So this is a template that I simply modified to meet our uh, goals and objectives for this particular social studies lesson. So the next one, you get to do this again, relates to Google Earth. So can you see it, Marnie? Uh, we can just see the, the main slide. Where right do you want Evelyn to look? You gotta tell me if you can't. Any, that's, it's a little odd that it doesn't switch. So you can see this. Okay, good. And the top says, where do you want Evelyn to live? Yep, browse Google Earth, click on the Del Rey in the link below and follow the instructions to add your location to our read for the record 2020 map. We can't see the map yet, but we okay. can so, see Right, so that's correct. So you all are going to click on earth.google.com. And what you're going to notice is that I have actually created in Google Earth a read for the record 2020 map. So just like the directions say, um, as you click, you'll notice that I chose for Evelyn um, to move to Delray, California, because I thought she should move to 
this to California and to the city that represents her name. And I thought kids would really get a kick out of that as well. So as you click on that and you go to Google Earth, I'm gonna do new share. Give it a minute to populate. You will notice that I have preset, I hope. <laughs> it worked really well for dot day. All right, here we go. I'm still thinking about it. All right, awesome. So on my screen, what you're seeing is Delray, California. And if you were watching, it zoomed in to that location. So I actually set a pin, which you can do with your own students. If you're studying different states, for example, if you're studying certain regions of our country, which of course aligns with social studies standards in third grade, you can do this. So when I click on Del Rey, you're going to see a pop-up that comes up. And I actually added the picture of the book uh, to this pin. And it says, Evelyn's moving away. The author does not tell us where she moved to, but the two friends stay in touch by writing letters. I thought she should move to Del Rey, California, because that is her last name. Where would you want her to move? Add a place mark and add your details as to why you picked this location. So you should be able to add a pin uh, over on the left-hand side. So basically the best way to do this is to search. So if you go to the search button and you search a location that you would like for Evelyn to move to, go ahead and do that. So notice some recent searches. I searched Fern Park, Florida. That's where I grew up when we were connecting our dots on National Dot Day. And then I searched Delray. So I'm going to put in Honolulu and you're going to see it pop up. And then notice what happens. I love how it zooms out and then zooms back in. Kids are fascinated by that. So take a look. On the bottom right, you'll see the button that says add to project. All right, so you're already in my Read for the Record project. So now in order to add to the project, you simply click that and then add your information and just say, I hope, uh, or I'd like Evelyn to move here so that I can visit her. Do something just quickly to add to our map, if you would, please. I appreciate this activity so much. And in every grade level K-12, there are geography standards. And so you can look at the standards for the classroom that you're working with, with the students and just adapt it, right? So that this activity is so versatile. And so I, I appreciate this one a lot. Well, and I think if your students are really young, they're going to um, really be engaged by the visual appeal of Google Earth. And you can model, just like what I did, you can model different locations and show them to them. And I think specifically, you know, here I picked, I picked Honolulu, and then you start to see some of the landmarks nearby. So I've been really fortunate to be able to go to the Pearl Harbor National Memorial uh, and to visit Honolulu, and it's such a historic site. These are the types of things that can truly expose our students and provide more of a global education that we really need to provide to our kids. All right, so I'm hoping that gave you enough time. So here's what will happen. When you get this link, uh, you'll be able to go back into that map on this particular slide and you'll be able to see all the different places. Um, as long as you added to the project, you'll get to see all the different places that the 30 plus people that have attended today um, decided for Evelyn to move to, which is really cool. And that's something that I think also unites students so you can talk about, oh, why was it that you chose for her to go here? And a lot of times they'll say, well, that's where my grandma lives and I wish that I could go there. So you start to really build community and learn a lot about your students by using activities like this. I'm gonna switch back out. Just love, love, love using Google Earth. All right. And oh. we're getting close. Yes, very this is close. my favorite. <laughs> yes, these are some of my favorites also. So Miss Kay and I totally believe that pictures are worth a thousand words and 
Uh, I know I've got close to 12,000 pictures on my phone and a lot of them relate to some of these passion projects. And she mentioned this earlier, but obviously last year and some of you are probably um, behind the scenes here as well. Uh, this was last year's project, uh, which was, the book was Thank You Amu, which, which was such an amazing book. And if you take a look at the picture uh, at the center of the bottom of our two lovely ladies, one of the things you can't see is that it's kind of hard to see, but they're wearing community helper vests. So I highly encourage you to really get into whatever book is being offered. And uh, here we had them be different community members. And we certainly brought in uh, a variety of community members as well, including UCF's police department, which we're so thankful for, and UCF's fire department as well. Uh, the kids were thrilled to be able to get into that national championship car. And just saying, Ms. Kay and I were kind of excited about that too. And to actually get in the fire truck, uh, just, just some priceless memories that you can connect to these great books. Uh, and you'll see some of the other activities. And of course, um, when we're on campus, I always like to bring Nitro because who doesn't love a great picture with our fabulous mascot? It was so fun. And so yeah, we had 12 different stations. Just like this year, we had 12 different stations that correlated. Our math station was a graph. Uh, thank you, Amu had a lot to do with community helpers that were coming. There was a hot dog vendor and a, a police officer. And so we asked the students what they want to be when they grow up. And so we did a bar graph um, of students. This um, was in the gym. And then literally the day before, we had 4,000 students at the UCF basketball game. And they did this activity as well. Um, with Nitro, they were able to read and sing the fight song with vocabulary. So we took out the words from the fight song and the students were able to have like sentence strips and put in the words that correlated. So they were able to cheer with Nitro. So I know I'm speaking for uh, Miss Kay, but I really feel like this particular event is something that really gets my creativity going because anytime a book comes out, which I should say, the books normally come out uh, around March, April, so that you can start preparing. And they make the selection, and then you just go with it, remembering that you can uh, also get Spanish versions of the books as well. And I think that's one thing I really liked about uh, this particular book this year. It embedded uh, the Spanish language, and that could also be another great activity that you could incorporate into your classrooms, too. Adding some, uh, some Spanish words to a bilingual word wall would be a great idea. All right, Marnie. And this is um, Dr. Wenzel uh, apologizes for not being here today. She's actually doing Virtual Buddies Book Club tonight uh, at 4.30 with her RED 4942 students. Um, and this, but she is going to the Orlando Day Nursery on um, October 29th, which is next Thursday already. Um, and so she has a Sign Up Genius link. Um, if you're interested in volunteering, she definitely needs volunteers to help run the event. It is very important to note that masks will be required and socially distant um, protocols will be put into place. Um, but if you are interested in volunteering with some super cute little kids um, and doing these activities with them, um, you will receive a copy of the book for free if you go and help her. So we are so excited. So this, um, the link is now in the chat. Um, we're going to put the link in the chat. It's also in the presentation for the sign up genius. So um, I can link that as well because I don't, I think it was in my email. So I will um, go back and find that specific link and put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Fantastic. All right. So uh, there's our final slide and we are coming in uh, right on time. Notice that Carla very kindly put the Google attendance form. So we do want you to go in and click on that link. That is uh, what will provide a certificate to you that you have attended this session. And uh, note that she said, uh, make sure that under the title, you write read for the record 2020. And the next link is the link to the sign up genius for anyone that might be interested in working with Orlando Day Nursery. And uh, in the spirit of homecoming, uh, one of the critical uh, folks that works at the Orlando Day Nursery was a sorority sister of mine at UCF way back when uh, in the early 90s. And she's just doing amazing work. And she always comes and gives back to us. So I'm certainly hoping that 
uh, you all will give back and work with Orlando Day Nursery and do some fun things with them. So on this last slide, uh, you see we've added uh, Dr. Wenzel. She's uh, just sliding in on the side there with her Bitmoji. Uh, that's all of our contact information. If you have questions or you want to share celebrations, please do tag us. Uh, if you do these celebrations, as Ms. Kay mentioned earlier, all of our Twitter handles are there. And then, of course, if you're not following your own school of teacher education, you should be. Uh, the at UCF teacher ed, that's specifically the school of teacher education. There's a larger umbrella, of course, with the um, College of Community Innovation and Education, but really our part is the School of Teacher Ed. So uh, anytime you're doing great things and you wanna share that, make sure you tag them because they love to see that and so do we. And so we'd love to know if we have a few minutes left, um, if you would like to put in the chat, what was your favorite activity that you heard today that you're most excited to try? Um, we would love that. If anybody has any questions too, please feel free to ask. We are more than happy to answer them. They're coming through. Writing Simon says, that's a fun one. Oh, dance brain breaks. We did that two weeks ago with our reading buddies with the dot day song and those little K2 students, they were up like jamming in their bedrooms. It was the cutest thing I've ever seen. We're going to do that tomorrow with uh, the Legend of Rock Paper Scissors. So Natalia, I see that you liked the letter generator and Kindle, uh, secret writing, so much fun, Melody. Yes, brain breaks. And you could even just, you know, you could read the book and then play Simon Says like that and then do a follow-up activity. You can certainly pair them uh, together. So I love that. Michelle said, writing a positive letter to someone in school. We learned yesterday how to address a postcard. So that would go right along with that. I love that, Michelle. The rock garden idea, Hannah, uh, is such a great one. Uh, we've actually, I've done that as well. Um, the rocks are really heavy. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> to have a large group of them. I went to so many different Hobby Lobbies and locations, and I think I ended up just buying some on Amazon, but be careful with the rocks that you pick and take some of the tips from the blog, without a doubt. Letter writing and secret messages, Sarah. Oh, I see so many of my seniors. I'm so excited uh, that you all were able to make it and appreciate you all doing that. Michelle Wilson, I see you there. Vivian, so nice to see your name. Love the watercolor idea. and. As Ms. Kay said, you know, there's some really cheap watercolors that you could pick up uh, at the dollar store. And honestly, you only need a couple of them because the, what you really need are just some of those white markers. And I believe, Ms. Kay, we bought those on Amazon. You can get just complete boxes. Yeah, a complete set of white crayons. Like you just order the pack. I did not know you could do that. I thought you had to order the whole thing. You don't. Amazon has everything. Um, awesome. uh, Mackenzie, Mackenzie, I just emailed Dr. Wenzel because I'm not sure about the hours for next week, but I did email her. If you go on the Sign Up Genius link, I didn't try that link, so it might give you more specifics um, on there once you're in there. Yes, so right now before we go, I'm going to go ahead and uh, send the link uh, to this particular presentation so that you have all that we have here and you can click on all those great links. Um, we certainly hope that at minimum you decide to share uh, a great piece of quality children's literature with your students. Uh, and again, keep an eye out uh, and I hope that you will pledge and you do have to know the numbers and the adults included count. So we really want to, I think last year we got over 2 million. Uh, collectively, I know that we've reached uh, the 22 million plus mark of children hearing great stories on Read for the Record Day. So we certainly want to contribute to that and Read for the Record certainly follows us and sometimes will retweet. So make sure you, uh, you tag us and use that hashtag of hashtag Read for the Record. Well, Ms. Kay, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. So Being fun. My partner was... in all things read for the record. And um, we wish uh, Dr. Winsel and Miss Kay and all of you that are doing great read for the record activities uh, coming up next week the best of luck. And please do share with us all your successes. 
We will. And uh, Mackenzie, I reached out. And when you click on the Sign Up Genius link, it just asks what your time up you are available. So I think it's going on all day. And you can pick the time that, you, that would work best for you. So yes, I'm so excited. It was great to see some current students and past students. So I appreciate yes. you guys for coming on. Thank We're you. championing all things teachers right now. We are uh, keeping you all in our thoughts. Thank you all so much, especially those of you. There's so many of you on the call tonight that are in internship too. Uh, this is a great opportunity for you to uh, present Read for the Record on your own with students of your own in your classroom. So thank you all so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Carla, you're amazing. Bye, Michelle. Thank you.